Hi, everybody. It is July 30, still. 2021. Did Biden just signal another lockdown? In all probability, more restrictions are on the way, says Biden. Oh, boy. It's not. It, it, it's not every day. It's like every hour you get really bad news. And I don't want to play this because it's way too scratchy and I'll link to it below. And if you want to listen to this psychopath, his his voice, I, I, I have to limit. I have to limit how much I can listen to liars now on a daily basis. I can't take it. But isn't it interesting? This. Now I can't read this. And I could get, you know. Well, goodbye. No longer have a channel. Here. What have they been saying? They've been saying... That's what they've been saying. But it's really... Well... It's really that. Hmm... I don't even want to link to this because links can also disappear your channel. So if you'd like to see this, then just put in the title in a search bar and you'll get it. Okay? Okay? Okay. There you go. So, what's happening? This is what's happening. Um, I was going to play uh, like seven minutes of what Jeremiah Babe is saying. Uh, click on the link below if you want to listen to this. Realtors, who, you know, there are some good out there, but boy, they are selling homes when it's clear there's a housing bubble and it's going to pop once again we're doing the same old same old what expecting different results realtors want your money and he says don't buy do not buy any homes now mortgage crisis will be catastrophic nine million americans are not confident they can pay their mortgage. Nine million. Wow. Consumers burning through their cash because, well, there's just no more money. Something like over three trillion have has been lost and Americans their savings, something I, I can't remember the figure, one point seven trillion now. Okay, um, but he speaks about the eviction, and then he said it's probably going to be extended. Really? Let's see. The CDC's ban on evictions during the pandemic ends tomorrow. In a last-ditch effort, House Democrats tried but failed to extend it this evening. They really? Pelosi said she was confident that Oh, it was the CDC that was going to extend it. But the Supreme Court said, oh, the CDC does not have that authority, which is really bizarre that Pelosi had said that, considering the Supreme Court came out with their ruling before she spoke today. They failed. The Democrats just failed. And now they're off on vacation for six weeks. The Millionaire Club. You're looking at it, that dome, the Millionaire Club. We just failed. We couldn't get it together to extend that moratorium for millions upon millions upon millions of Americans who are now really freaking out. You know what? Americans, my entire life, 
Americans have bent over and they took it. They didn't stop a thing. They held nobody accountable. And this is where it leads. Then they went home for summer recess. Now millions of struggling Americans are living in fear of getting kicked out of their homes in the days and weeks to come. Tonight, President Biden is calling for all states and local governments to immediately disperse the billions of dollars in COVID relief money that was meant to help those renters and landlords. So far, but a tiny fraction of that funding has actually been used. Here's NBC's Vaughn Hilliard. Just want to point out again, because I did post a video earlier on the evictions. Funny how they were so concerned with so much else and not at all. And they left Biden, dispersed that money immediately. And tomorrow they lift the moratorium. Really? Okay. You know, none of this should be taking place. None of it should be taking place. And that's why I have such a difficult time addressing all of these issues that we now face. None of it should be taking place. You know, if Americans really were an honest people, none of this would be taking place. But you know what? When I first heard, ah, we're going home. Sorry we failed. I literally had a visceral response. My stomach got really, I feel sick to my stomach. What are these people going to do? Jesus. Oh, my God. Now the question is, what happens to these families here? Well, there's a great many of them that are waiting to hear back on federal funds that were actually set aside as part of relief packages from earlier this year. But very little of those federal funds have actually made it into the hands of renters and their landlords. You were waiting for the paperwork to go through. You said you turned in your documentation? I turned in all my documents, yes. And what have you heard? At this moment, I haven't heard anything. Do you even feel like you understand the system? I don't. I don't. It's so confusing. Just five and a half percent of the $522 million that was set aside for Georgia renters has actually gone to Georgia renters and landlords to prevent eviction here in this exact circumstance. And that is where those who have called on the uh, moratorium to be extended say, look, these folks need protections in the heart of this pandemic. These are tough circumstances here in these days ahead for these millions of families. Shepard Smith here. Didn't he have a meltdown and got fired from another um, station? I don't know. Oh, yeah. I bet Nancy can't wait to get home. We turn now to that $350 billion fund to help small businesses and its workers get through the shutdown. It will be up to Congress to restock it. But Democrats blocking that move this morning. They asked for a quarter of a trillion dollars in 48 hours. I said, well, I don't, I don't think so. They objected, and I congratulate the Senate Democrats. Speaker Pelosi, what are you going to share with us from your home? Chocolate candy. Thousands have been forced to wait for hours at food banks all across the country. This is... Oh my. Chocolate, and then we have some other chocolate here. We just got to restock the ice cream. You don't want to eat up everything all at one time. I can't do it much longer. I'm trying so hard. We were, can we say, enjoying. Having to admit that, yeah, we're starving, and... I like it better than anything else. Taping this segment, there are 22 million people out of This work. specific program is about stopping job losses today. This is hurting people bad. Other people in our family go for some other flavors, but... Right now, it's survival mode. You don't know where that next something else going to come from. I don't know what I would have done if ice cream were not invented. I just wonder. <laughs> Sadistic. Doesn't matter that that was like a year ago. Americans were sent home. You're non-essential. You don't get to have a paycheck anymore. 
figure out what the hell you're going to do. Good luck. A whole lot of Americans have been brought into a condition where it's paycheck to paycheck. And this woman puts up this. Really? She has this? Uh, it, what? How can... Are we this sick? Are Americans this sick that they put up with this? So demoralized? So beaten down? That they put up with sick, twisted, malignant, narcissistic, psychopathic, subhuman creatures? The Million Dollar Club. Six weeks of vacation. Sorry, we failed to help. The near, what? Well, it's anywhere in between 7 and 12 million facing eviction. Sorry. But let me run home and eat my very expensive ice cream. Okay. The home sales boom means you might end up renting. America's high home prices could turn us into a nation of renters. Well, that's the plan, right? And <clears throat> rents are really skyrocketing. Rental prices continue to skyrocket, squeezing renters across the country. So millions upon millions upon millions facing eviction. Well, when you're facing eviction, it means you don't have much money. Where are they going to find places to live? And when you do your, you know, search of this, rent prices are spiking in Phoenix and Las Vegas and elsewhere. And rental prices continue to skyrocket. Single family house rents are skyrocketing. Rising rents threaten to prop up inflation and it goes on and on and on. Rents are out of reach for most Americans. Earning, earning your low wage. Oh my God. Well, house fails to extend eviction moratorium ahead of six week recess. And yes, you know, the extension would only hurt landlords. Oh, wait, there's billions and billions and billions of dollars that has not been dispersed to those landlords. Might this be deliberate? Nancy and Paul Pelosi making millions in stock trades in companies she actively regulates. July 15, Glenn Greenwald, darling of the left, but no longer because, well, he has been writing the truth. Cancel him. <clears throat> We are so, well, look, <sighs> I wish we could have gotten rid of these creatures, these subhuman things. There are indigenous tribes in countries that when they see a tribe member have psychopathic traits, they get rid of them. They kill them. But we're, and I'm not suggesting that. This woman, how long has she been in Congress? Biden has been, yeah, it's his career, 50, 50 years. Profiting, profiting from their positions. I don't understand us. Nancy Pelosi snuck 
$350 million for the 50 richest zip codes into the COVID relief bill. This was in 2020. Wow. The Democrats included huge cash handouts for wealthy constituents in predominantly liberal areas in their emergency response package. And you know what? They got the money. Ordinary Americans, you needed help paying your rent. Landlords, you needed that rent money. Too bad for you. The bailout is working for the rich. The economy is in free fall, but Wall Street is thriving. And stocks of big private equity firms are soaring dramatically higher. That tells you who investors think is the real beneficiary of the federal government's massive rescue efforts. I, along with many others, have posted so many videos on bailouts, you know, the American, the federal government bailing out the farmers. Where did the money go? Not to the farmers who really needed it. It went to, well, some who weren't even farmers. It went to the big farmers. It went to the people who didn't need it. Do you think we're living through a wealth redistribution? Perhaps. No lessons have been learned. Why the trillion dollar coronavirus bailout benefited the rich. And this guy benefited the rich. God, the CARES Act sent you a $1,200 check, but gave millions and billions, or gave millionaires and billionaires far more. Far more. That's right. They put on a f an act. They put on an act when they're talking to the public. And then they screw you behind. But it, it's not so behind because every time they screw you, it's been found out. But you believe them. Keep believing these people. Well, it doesn't even matter anymore because we're done. With working Americans' survival at stake, the U.S. is bailing out the richest. Yes, he did. Because we have to destroy more. We have to destroy more over something that is a complete lie. More Americans have to go down. Chuck Schumer <laughs> tax bailout for rich liberals. These people are the most disgusting lowlifes walking. I don't give a shit that they have these, well, what Americans consider to be prestigious positions and they wear fancy clothes and they have these, uh, well, press conferences and they talk, you know, in, in, in behind a podium and, and look at them. Oh, my God. They're disgusting lowlifes, criminals who don't have a moral bone in their body. Look at this. Does it feel like everything is getting more expensive? Mm, that's because it is. Cost of bacon, hot dogs, other pork products is rising. Chicken rising. Beef and pork. Sticker shock. Why your next rental car might cost more than a plane ticket. Here's why car prices are so high and why that matters. Americans want to travel again, but some vacations are now way more expensive than normal. 17% spike in flight fares and hotels. Hotels are more expensive. Eggs 
are probably going to get more expensive. Peanut butter skyrockets. Morning coffee? Well, look at what happened in Brazil. It snowed. Guess what? We get an awful lot of coffee from Brazil. Coffee is going to really skyrocket. Scares the shit out of me. Because it's very hard for me to get to the stores. Higher prices for ice cream, beer, bottled water. Well, I don't, I don't think that will bother Nancy Pelosi. Chipotle, that's another. All restaurants, Cracker Barrel, everything's going up. Red Robin. Um, houses in the U.S. cost 13.2% more in March. Uh, paint just got more expensive. Cardboard boxes have never been in more demand. The price of lumber, although that went down. Um, corn is the latest commodity to soar. Grain prices are rising. Beans, uh, it, you know, beans to burgers. Food is getting more expensive. Alcohol, Coke, wine, more expensive. Diapers, feminine care products, toilet paper, more expensive. Run out and stock up on your toilet paper. Cheap furniture and toys could soon get much more expensive. $70 video games. Clorox. Your clothes are about to get more expensive. Why are dumbbells so expensive right now? Well, gas prices, highest in seven years, up 40% since January. Health care continues to be un unaffordable. Insulin prices going up. Weddings will be more expensive in 21 and 22. Practically everything is getting more expensive in America. So, what are Americans to do? You know, one of the reasons why we have a housing bubble is because of BlackRock. Massive bailout leaves Wall Street giant exposed to fire from all sides. Huh. That fire didn't stop BlackRock. Well, they didn't put out the fire. BlackRock, a Wall Street titan that manages $7 trillion in assets, is facing growing scrutiny over its role at the center of the Federal Reserve's massive bailout of U.S. corporations. Hmm. And it's coming from all sides. U.S. lawmakers in both parties on multiple fronts including over its sheer size and market power, uh, BlackRock's sheer size, market power, its ties to China, its tough stance against companies that contribute to climate change, and the extent to which its own bottom line may benefit from the government programs. Huh. Oh, benefit they did. They sure did. The Fed selected BlackRock to run a groundbreaking program to buy hundreds of billions of dollars in debt from large companies slammed by the coronavirus crisis. Not small companies, large companies. We'll buy up your debt. Thank you. You're too small. Close your doors. You know, here again, the uh, BlackRock investment firms aren't buying all the houses, but they are buying the most important ones. Not the mansions, the ones that the middle class might be able to afford, the millennials that could 
maybe buy. Those are the ones they're going after. Unbelievable. So, BlackRock, and you can read these articles if you want. I'll link to them below. I mean, everything is so shady. I've posted videos on all of these investment firms buying up single-family homes, you know, uh, and creating this housing bubble and creating, you know, the housing prices skyrocketing where your average American couldn't buy, but BlackRock can. Hell, especially when BlackRock is handed money from the Federal Reserve that prints it out of thin air. Wow, what a system we have, huh? Invitation Homes, a 21 billion publicly traded company that was spun off from Blackstone, the world's largest private equity company in 2017, Invitation Homes operates in 16 cities with the biggest concentration in Atlanta, where it owns 12,556 houses. Though that's not much compared with the 80,000 homes sold in Atlanta each year, Invitation Homes bought 90% of the homes for sale in some zip codes in Atlanta in the early 2010s while normal people typically pay a mortgage interest rate between 2% and 4% these days, Invitation Homes can borrow money for less. It's getting billion-dollar loans at interest rates around 1.4%. In practice, this means that Invitation Homes can afford to tack on an extra five or 20000 to the purchase price of every home. Well, when the ordinary American can't afford that jump up, the investment firms come along and they got it. Yeah. So they tack on 5000 to 20000 to the purchase price while getting the house at the same actual cost as a typical home owner, we've got so much corruption going on. And you can read this article. A glaring new conflict of interest undermines public trust in the Federal Reserve. Oh, Federal Reserve and Larry Fink, BlackRock. Congress didn't put out the fire. Federal Reserve just made the problem of financial firms considered too big to fail a whole lot bigger. This has been going on and only getting worse for pretty much my entire lifetime. U.S. Central Bank has hired investment giant BlackRock, which manages some $7 trillion in assets. Well, the 2008-9 uh, financial collapse, BlackRock only had uh, assets of one point something. Boom, big jump. BlackRock, BlackRock was handling uh, the, the stimulus the CARES Act. Federal Reserve handed over to BlackRock. You manage this. And BlackRock gave a whole lot of money to their friends. The rich get richer and, well, the 90% just get destroyed. So BlackRock 
managing some $7 trillion in assets to run purchases of corporate bonds and commercial mortgages that are part of its response to the pandemic-led recession. 2008 financial crisis, the Fed complained that it had been forced to bail out Wall Street megabanks because of the real possibility that their failure would lead to even deeper economic damage. The Dodd-Frank law, oh my God, I remember posting videos, this Dodd-Frank, and it, it was so, it was, look, ma'am, this has been going on for a long time. Dodd-Frank did nothing, nothing to solve the problem. But it was supposed to solve the problem, making banks raise more equity relative to their debt loads, making them less fragile, and giving the Fed the authority and means to wind down very large banks in an orderly fashion. And they didn't do it. During the last crisis, BlackRock's assets under management were $1.3 trillion. So they have ballooned in size, five times in size. Under the Fed's program, BlackRock could buy some of its own funds. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's a handy deal for BlackRock, isn't it? Yeah, buy up your own funds on behalf of the central bank. It doesn't take a financial expert to find that kind of self-dealing fishy. And BlackRock also gets $8 million to manage these programs. Well, look, it's been very obvious for many years, and there was nothing, nothing that we could do. You can't do a thing when most people don't want to do anything. And look, the, you know, you can't even organize when there's no trust. You, so we just, we end up betraying one another in this nightmare. <laughs> in addition to the prestige advantage the move gives BlackRock, which has suddenly become instrumental to the transmission of monetary policy, there's also the bonus of $8 million per year, and there's more. I mean, it, it's really, like Jeremiah Babe says, you know, in his, in his uh, video, it's so twisted. It's so twisted. It's so twisted. Millions facing eviction. Some will come fast. A whole lot will take some time. 400,000 filed first time unemployment. The jobs that we have today are service sector jobs. And a whole lot of companies are going robot. So. I'll link below um, if you know people who are being evicted, if there's anything that you can do to help them out. Because um, this is going to come back and bite us all. I shouldn't say us all. It's going to come back and bite all of you because I've been bitten and there's no more biting. Wow, man. I really hope. You now, I, I read the comments below my video that I posted earlier on these evictions, and there are really a lot of sick and twisted, awake people. The judgment. Wow. Scary. Not good people. I hope you're all okay, and I hope that you all stay safe. 
And I hope that that remains the case always. But please, help, help people. Help, you know, extend yourself. Just do what you can in your own communities to help people because a lot of people are hurting. <laughs>